In the next episode, I'm going to give you an assignment where you're going to try and build a calculator inside using C Sharp. And this is sort of a tradition on my channel to build a calculator as the first project. So I thought that might be something that we might want to stick to keeping traditions alive and then doing the calculator for the next exercise. Before we can do that, there's a couple of things you need to know. In the previous episode, we talked about conditional statements. And in this one, you're going to be learning a little bit about something called parsing. And then you're also going to learn how to actually write stuff into the console and then grabbing that data so you can actually use it for something. And that is actually a very good skill to know how to do because it's something that is pretty basic, but it's still something that you might want to uh, be interested in learning how to do because when users type stuff in, into the console, we can do a lot more when we can actually grab that data. So what you can see in front of me here is that I have a int variable called num. And what I'm simply going to do here is I'm going to give you an example of when it comes to converting certain data to another piece of data. Now, when we have certain data, and we did actually talk about different data types in a previous episode, I will leave a link for that in the description if you want to check it out. And we talked about the names for the different data types that we have when it comes to C sharp. But when it comes to the .NET framework, we also have another name for some of these data types that blah. <laughs> we also have some other names that the .NET framework uses for these names that we use for data types. So for example, if I were to take a, a short, which is another name for a type of integer that has just a shorter range of numbers we can use. In .NET, we call that an int 16, whereas if we were to take a integer, which is the int data type that we have right here, we call that an int 32 in the .NET framework. If we were to take a long, which is another data type with longer range of numbers, then we call that int 64, I do believe. So there's some different names for these different data types when it comes to the .NET framework. And why do we need to know this? Well, you need to know this because when we want to use certain methods inside the .NET framework, they're going to be referring to certain data types as the .NET names. Meaning that right now, let's say I have this, uh, not an integer, but instead a string. So I'm going to create a string and I'm going to set this one equal to a string called two. So right now we have a string called num that is equal to a string data type, which is going to be two. Now, what if I want to take this and co convert it to an integer data type? Well, then we can do that using a method inside the .NET framework, meaning that we do need to refer to the .NET name for an integer when we want to use this method here. So if I were to go down to next line and say I want to take um, another variable, we can actually call this one int. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set this one equal to num2. And I want to set this one equal to num. And what you'll notice here is that we do actually get an error message because right now num up here is a string data type. Meaning that if I try to set a string data type e equal to a integer, data type like the one I have down here, then it's going to tell me that it cannot implicitly convert type string to a integer because we haven't actually converted it yet. And we do actually call that parsing. So what we need to do here in order to actually parse this piece of information and turn it into a integer data type from a string is that we need to use this parsing method that we have inside the .NET framework. So what I'm going to do here is right in front of my, whatever data I have that I need to convert. And again, it would actually make sense that we have a number inside the string when we try to convert it to a number. If we were to write Daniel, then I can't really convert that into a integer data type, if that makes sense. So just be aware of that. So right in front of my num down here, where I set it equal to my integer data type, I do want to refer to a int, 32 and then I'm going to say I want to parse it parentheses and then I want to make sure that num is inside the parentheses. So right now we're converting this num variable which is a string called two into a integer version of two if that makes sense. So if I were to save this and actually run this inside my uh, inside my console so we're going to say console dot right line and actually run this piece of information. So I'm gonna say we want to run num2, then run it. You can see we do not get any sort of error messages when we try to run it and it just gives us out two. Again, we can't really tell inside the console if this is a string or a integer data type. There's other ways to check this. We can actually check if this is actually an integer or not and then we'll return a true or false statement, um, but we're just not gonna do that right now. Just know that if you want to parse certain information from a string to a integer, we need to use this little 
a method here in front of or actually we need to put our data inside the parentheses of this method here in order to convert it to a integer data type. So now you might be asking, why do you need to know this? Well, that's because if I were to go in and say I want to allow the user to write something into the console and submit it to us, then when the user types something into the console and clicks enter to submit it, it is going to submit to us as a string data type. Meaning that if I want to run, let's say a calculation, where the user are going to write, okay, I want to add, I want to add two plus four, then when he submits the two and the four, we're going to receive it as a string data type. And if you want to do calculations, it has to be an integer data type, right? So let me just go ahead and show you what I mean here. When we run this application here, I'm just going to set num equal to console dot read line parentheses. And what this basically means is that when the application runs inside the console, it is going to go through the code from top to bottom and it's going to say, okay, the first thing that is going to happen here is that the user has to write something into the console and click enter. Um, what we can actually do is we can actually give out a message before that happens. So we can say console dot write line. Let's actually go and spell that correctly. There we go. And what I can do here is I can actually say, um, what is actually let's do something with numbers here because that's what we're doing uh what is your age question mark and then what is going to happen is that the user is going to type in their age and it's just going to be a number and then we do actually receive it and set it equal to this variable here called num we could actually call that one age instead if we wanted to and then what is going to happen is that we're going to use this age for something, meaning that we need to parse it in order to use it. Actually, I could just not delete what we had here because that actually doesn't make sense. Um, so let's just go ahead and test this out. I'm going to go ahead and take my age here and I'm just going to put it inside the parsing method. So we do actually parse it into a number now. So I'm going to say we want to say, um, let's just go ahead and run. So let's just go ahead and say we want to do a console dot right line. Let's actually make sure we do that in capitalized letters. There we go. And inside of here, I'm just going to go ahead and say your age in five years is going to be and then we want to add some data here. So we're going to say plus, then we're just going to go ahead and write new age, which is going to be a variable we're going to create now. So right before this, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to take the age int new age, set it equal to num2 plus five. So this should technically write out the new age in five years into the console. And if I were to run this, let's actually go and run it, you can see we do get what is your new, uh, what is your age Then I'm going to write it in? I'm going to say, let's say 20. And then it's going to say your new age in five years is going to be 25. Then it's going to write 20 again, which is because I do believe we just simply console lock it out here. So let's actually go and remove that again. That is not part of what we were doing here. Save it, run it. And then you can see it says, what is your new age or what is your age? And then I'm going to say 30 this time. And then it says your age in five years is going to be 35. So you can see how we can write stuff into the console, submit it. Um, but let's go ahead and try and remove this parsing method that I just included here, which I said you had to use. If I were to do this, you can see we get this error message here. It says cannot implicitly convert string to integer. So again, we can't assign a integer variable type here in the same way as we couldn't before. So let's go ahead and go back again. And instead this time, let's go ahead and say we want to make this into a string data type. So we're sim simply setting a string into a string. We can actually remove this again because we don't need that. Because now it shouldn't give us any sort of error messages up here. But wait, now it gives us an error message down here because I'm trying to add a string data type to a integer data type. So you see how we keep getting errors if we don't just immediately convert our data to the proper 
data type when we actually need to use it. So anytime you need to use any numbers for calculations or something like that, it's very important that you stick with integer data types. And that's why it's important that we do actually parse it as soon as we can when we do actually grab the data from the user. If we expect that to be uh, an integer data type we're going to use for some time, at least if we expect at least if we do expect that data to be some kind of data type that we're going to use for calculations or something. So this is what I want to teach in this episode. In the next one, I'm gonna do a short introduction to the project that you're going to be building, maybe give you, giving you a few hints on what you need to uh, look into from previous lessons. And then once we've done that, I would like for you to send your solution to me by email. I'm gonna leave an email uh, in the next video, in the description of the video. Go ahead and send the email to me with either a screenshot of your code or just the code files if you want to send those to me. And I will take a few examples, just hand plug a few of them. And then we will go through the different solutions that you guys came up with on the next video. If I do get them in time, if not, then we're going to do it the video after that one. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. 